What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. FantasyTeamAdvisors.com, bringing home the bacon NFL DFS video. We are breaking down the main slate over on DraftKings. We did a FanDuel one uh, earlier in the week, and a lot of players that we talked about have already been ruled out. So probably from here on out, we're going to have these videos either come out on Friday or Saturday uh, just to make it a little bit more sense. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. We hit 10,000 YouTube subscribers last week. Very excited about that. Thank you guys so much. It took a very long time. took nine years to hit 10,000, but hopefully we skyrocket from there. So it's been one week since 10,000. All of our social media links are down below. So maybe you're new to the channel. Go check that out. Give us a follow on Instagram. Uh, we just started posting on TikTok, YouTube shorts as well. If you guys could like these videos, share these videos, that helps out a lot. And if you are new to the channel, we have giveaways every single time we have one of these videos as long as we hit the goal. Now, what is the goal, you may ask? Like this video be a subscriber, and leave a comment for the comment picker. If this video gets at least 50 likes, you have a chance to win a free week of FTA+. Plus. That is a week of every single sport that you see. MLB, NASCAR, NBA once it's back, NFL, PGA, MMA. If this video gets at least 100 likes and you've left a comment, you have a chance to win a free month of FTA+. Plus. 150 likes is a chance at a free year, 200 or more likes on a video, a chance at a $500 lifetime pass. Now, last week's video... Ended up getting 1,300 views, 100 likes, and 44 comments. So one of you that left a comment and liked the video last week are going to win a free month of FTA Plus right now. So let's check it out. We're going to roll it, and the winner will be announced. And you can win every single day. So make sure you come back. DePrince9102. There you go. Congratulations. Please email me. Let me know your username on the website. You have won a free month of FTA+. Plus. We're very excited. So good luck to everybody else. If you come back, if you like this video and you leave a comment, come back next week. You'll have a chance to win just like we did right here. So congratulations to Prince. You have been with us for a very long time. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go over everything. Um, and if you're new to the channel, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the fantasy points allowed by position. We are going to go through. We are going to uh, look at who we like. We are going to use SaberSim to build our lineups. And we are going to adjust it. Then we're going to build 5,000 lineups, which is what we've got. Then we're going to sim it. So we're going to do the simulations to show you what kind of lineups you can build with SaberSim and using our knowledge and our projections. And on top of that, you can even put it into a simulation and see which lineups might do well in this 20, like just for instance, whichever one you're doing. I just opened up the $25,000 quarter jackpot or jukebox. So that is there. Um, and that's kind of what we're going to use. So we're going to break down the main slate. We're going to have a Sunday night uh, football. So we're going to have a showdown breakdown video. So make sure you check out the channel. Make sure you hit the bell notification. I'm going to put chapters on this video so you can skip around if you'd like. But honestly, the more, the longer you guys watch this video, it helps the algorithm. So if you listen and find what you need and then maybe play it in the background, that helps as well. So make sure you check out our Discord as well because we're going to give you core plays. We're even going to give you some of the sports bets that we like in this week five football. So let's go. So if we were to look at the Vegas odds right now, just seeing the games that we have going on. Obviously, we already have Thursday night. There's a Sunday London game, so very early in the morning. may have already happened, depending on when you watch this video. But if we look at the games, or the game that has the Vegas odds at the mo highest over-under, the 49ers at the Cardinals, 49.5. They've overtaken the Bengals at the Ravens, 48 and a half. Then the Rams at Green Bay's 48 and a half. Texans uh, versus the Bills, 47 and a half. Very close games. Uh, the only close game right now that is not is the 49ers. So we're still going to build. We've already done a stacks video. So our top six, our top six stacks of week five, which I will link at the end of this video as well. So make sure you check this out. We've got all of that. Help us out and we will help you out every single week we possibly can it is a one-man show making these videos so all the love and support helps out immensely so that being said let's take a look at just some of the injury or i forgot to mention our sponsor for the video outlier.bet so check out outlier.bet they're all there we've got it you can check us out 
They are the sponsor. If you sign up, the link is down below. Make sure you sign up. If you sign up for the regular package, we're going to give you a free month of FTA+. Plus. If you sign up for the pro package, we're going to give you three months free. So you can see the different trends and insights that come through. We have that on our website or on our Discord. Those flood in when they flood into the, the site. So we're very excited about that. You can look at different props for NFL. You can check everything out. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through all of this and we are going to hopefully build some great lineups for you. So let's check it out. So we are going to look at just the injuries per each position right now. Obviously, Tua is still out. Richardson is doubtful. It sounds like it's going to be Joe Flacco. Would not be surprised if it is, which is exactly what we need. I would rather have Joe Flacco than Anthony Richardson, 100%. Um, Skylar Thompson is questionable. Uh, kind of waiting to see if it's going to be him or Tyler Huntley. Uh, so we'll figure that out when we get there. It'd probably be a uh, wait and see on it. So nothing else, nothing that like concerns us outside of hopefully it is Joe Burrow or uh, Joe Flacco that we get to play. Running back Jonathan Taylor already ruled out. Obviously McCaffrey is out. Mixon has been ruled out already. Brian Robinson Jr. is. Good to go. Yeah, I read that this morning. Good to go. Singletary doubtful, which brings us uh, some value here at for the Giants if we want to look that way. Obviously, Nick Chubb is still out. Zamir uh, White is out. Uh, Brooks is out, which that's fine. Uh, we weren't going to use him. So that's pretty much the for the running backs. Wide receivers took a hit. So obviously, Cup is already out. Um, Malik Neighbors and Devontae Adams both out. And Devontae Adams could be traded any day. Um Nakua is obviously out as well. Shakir has been ruled out since we made the last video. That's why we're making it. Romeo Dobbs was suspended one game by his team. I don't know why. Not sure why. Um, they're not going to tell us the news for that, um, which would obviously give a bump to J uh, Wix, possibly. Everything, everyone's going to be on Wix, but we could also look at... Um, Green Bay is going to be interesting. you got Jaden Reed, and then you've got... The uh, Wicks, because Watson's also doubtful. So Zay Jones being out as well, um, he's gone. Noah Brown also out for Washington. Kendrick Bourne and uh, KJ Osborne, both questionable. Pretty much what we're looking at there. Then we got the tight ends. Trey McBride being uh, questionable. He was added to the injury report with a rib injury, and his list is questionable. Will he, he had the concussion. Now he's got a rib, so we got to figure that out, but I don't mind that. Uh, Injoku, I believe, pretty good. I think he'll play, and we'll see that there. Ingram being questionable as well. Not expected to play, so hasn't been ruled out yet, but probably will be. Tyler Higby already out for the Rams. And that is the injury report for Week 5, which when we look at those injuries on paper, okay, but when we dig into this in this video, that is where I want you guys to hopefully find the value that we're going to look for. So there's certain things we're going to look for, and that is one of them. I, I want to dig in just a little bit more when we build these lineups. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So we are going to use the fantasy points per game, which I'm going to put on the other screen so you guys can see it when we build into SaberSim. So you can find this information as well on the site. You can find the Vegas odds. If you've never been to the website, fantasyteamadvisors.com is the website. Under the ML or NFL tab, we've got our matchup tool. We've got the volume report, the snap counts, the red zone stats, the projections, fantasy points allowed by position, Vegas odds, um, our cheat sheet, which is chock full of FanDuel and DraftKings. It's got stacks in there. It's got lineups in there. It's got it all. Uh, the chalk, if you're playing cash as well. So that being said, we are going to use SaberSim right now, and we are going to have a little bit of fun with it. So we are looking at the uh, QB situation. Jacksonville Jaguars rank dead last against the quarterback. Now, that right there is Indy. Indy is not going to be – it's not going to be Richardson. It's going to be Flacco, which I like. And if we look at Joe Flacco, obviously came in – uh, last week, 16 for 26, 168 yards, two touchdowns. Actually ran a little bit for being 95 years old. 15 fantasy points at 5,000. They've only bumped him up to 5,500. He is going to be a very highly sought out dude. Depends on who he's going to throw it to, but we, we, we can look at that as well. So Flacco is going to get a bump. 
I'm going to give a bump up to Flacco at 16 right now. I'm going to put him up. I'm going to put him up at 18 because I want him to at least be seen uh, with the algorithm and the simulations going through. Uh, the second position team that gives up the most, same game, same exact game. We've got Jacksonville. Now, Trevor Lawrence. Now, there were talks about Mac Jones maybe coming in um, if Trevor Lawrence started to poo-poo the bed. Uh, game log wise against Houston, 18 for 33, uh, two touchdowns did run a little bit, not much 14.76. My problem is he has not been that good. Um, he's been a bust for a, uh, first round draft first overall pick, but he's got a good matchup here. And I think he's going to go a little bit under own. So at 18, I'm going to put him at 19. I don't want to bump him up too much, but I want him to get a little bit more exposure when we build around that. The next one is Washington Commanders. They rank 29th out of 32 of teams. So that brings us to the Browns. This one's a little bit different. So Deshaun Watson is what we're looking at. And we look at Deshaun, and we see that uh, last game, down game, he has not been – It's he's. I remember before all the allegations, he was so good, so good against everybody. He was tossing the ball. He's not even getting over 200 yards um in this offense which is wild to think about 74.4 qb rating is not good i'll give him a little boost but i'm not i don't want him to use a little so i'm just going to go 17.75 i'm going to barely give him a boost here there's certain other ones that obviously we can give boost to so lamar jackson in this game the problem is the ravens are running the ball so much he doesn't have to throw it that much and they're still running wild and since he cannot stop the run the he does dump off pass, so he does get a little bit with dump off passes um but i'm gonna bump him up to 22 but my only problem is they're running so much and he's a running quarterback he might not have to throw the ball as much as we need him to to pay off his salary at 7500 um obviously josh allen i'm gonna give a boost up to houston houston um houston ranks where do they rank against the quarterback uh, 20th, they give up an average of 18.6 fantasy points per game on DraftKings. I'm still going to boost him up. He obviously is coming off a bad game. I'm going to go 23. I want him to be at the top. He's coming off not the best game against Baltimore, who shredded Bill's defense, and they were able to come around, and um, he sat the fourth quarter. So I'm going to give him a boost up there, and that's kind of where I'm looking at there. Jaden Daniels versus Cleveland. Cleveland against the quarterback ranked fifth overall. They only give up an average of 12.3 fantasy points a game. Obviously, Jaden Daniels is the number one QB right now in the NFL. Doesn't have the best matchup here. Um, did have a bad matchup against the Giants where it was a close game, but then he obviously shredded the last two games against two teams. So this will be a test uh, to see what he, he can bring to the table. Um, so like he's a, I'll put him at 21 because they're just other ones I like. I do love Brock Purdy this week. Brock Purdy, I'm going to put him at 22 as well. The, the only problem is they're at they're a seven and a half point favorite as of the making of this video. So hopefully he is the reason why and they don't run it all over them and we can we can get a ton of points. He should have every single uh, every George Kittle is questionable, but it looks like he's good to go now. We should see everyone at his disposal. We should see Brock Purdy flourish in this game, which I absolutely love. Now, C.J. Stroud against Buffalo. So Buffalo, um, as of the making of this video, this game has Houston as a one-point favorite. They opened up as a one-point favorite, and it stayed the same, which is wild. Um, so Stroud against Buffalo, I'm not saying he's going to do what Lamar did last week, which he didn't do a ton, but they they ran all over. I love this matchup. I'm going to go 2.50. I'm going to bump him up a little bit. Uh, Jordan Love. Against the Rams, the Rams are giving up. Let's see. The Rams give up 19.4 fantasy points per game. They rank 24th out of 32 against them. Jordan Love obviously started off very, very slow last week. Hopefully, it's well now because he came strong. So I'm going to put him at 20. And then Geno Smith obviously threw a ton. He's going up against the Giants. As long as this game can stay close, I like that matchup as well. So let's move to the running back position now. 
Now we're giving a boost to some of these. Um, if you guys haven't, uh, you can sign up for Saberson. I don't have a referral code. I don't have anything. You can get a five-day free trial. So you could sign up today as of making of this video and, and get two weeks worth of NFL uh, once it becomes available like next Thursday. Um, so, you, or, so you can check that out. If you want, again, obviously, it's up to you. So if we look against the running backs, the Buffalo Bills rank dead last, and that is because they gave up so much to Justice Hill and uh, Derrick Henry last week. It's a little skewed, um, so don't let the numbers fool you too much. Um, so be, for instance, there. Derrick Henry against Cincy. Cincy ranks 24th, give up an average of 25.6 fantasy points. I'm bumping up Derrick Henry to 22. I want the algorithm to love him a lot. So I'm getting him in there. Um, so we look at that. And we see that, uh, yeah, we, we look at that. I love Derrick Henry today. Uh, the Bills giving up the most. I don't trust that enough. Technically, Carolina gives up an average of 31.6 fantasy points to the opposing running back. So if we look at that, we're looking at Chicago. So let's take a look at Chicago running backs and see what we've got. You got DeAndre Swift at 5,700. You got Roshan, Roshan Johnson at 49. So DeAndre Swift last week dominant against the Rams 93 yards on the ground and a touchdown caught all seven targets for 72 yards had a, t a great game it's got a great matchup in this one so DeAndre Swift is going and we look at his matchup here uh they're giving up an average of 148.8 rushing yards per game which I love so Roshan also uh could but if I'm bumping I'm bumping up DeAndre Swift so we're gonna bump him up to 15 just to get a little bit of love out of that uh, next up's the Cowboys um, but we can't play that because that is Sunday night. So Arizona is up next. Arizona gives is ranked 29th overall out of 32. They give up an average of 30.2 fantasy points per game. So we bring that over here. We bring that to Jordan Mason. Jordan Mason's also going up to 22. If you look at what Jordan Mason was able to do this year so far, being the number one running back after McCaffrey being out, 25-20, bad game against the Rams, 27. So... If they follow this script and they go up decent and he stays in the game, they're going to run the ball with him, and he has a fantastic opportunity, which I want to take advantage of. So I do have Jordan Mason. I'm going to bump him up in the uh, Sabre Sim as well. So get out of San Francisco. Uh, the Rams are next, ranked 28th, give up 28.9 fantasy points per game. So that brings us to uh, Green Bay here. So Green Bay... Looking at this, Josh Jacobs, Emmanuel Wilson, Andrew Beck. So we look at this game. Jacobs really didn't do much last week. 11.8, had 51 yards on the ground against Minnie. Uh, Minnesota gives up. Minnesota is actually really good against the run. So I think a lot of people might be down on Josh Jacobs. We could look at him. So he's at 17. I'm going to bump him up to 18 just to get a little bit, um, a little bit bump there for what we want to look at. So then let's get out of there. We look next, the Dolphins. So Miami, which is New England. My problem is uh, Ramondre. Yes, Ramondre, is, has he been relegated down to RB2 now because of his fumbles? Will not start at running back in week five. It's come straight from the head coach. So that is a bump up to Gibson. So Gibson being 5,100 is going to be a value play here against Miami. Um, maybe a little bit of bump. Let's put him, let's put Gibson up to, let's put him at 13 just to give him a little bit. Um, and we'll see. You never know. Just because Ramondre's not starting doesn't mean, doesn't mean he might not out touch him. We'll see. It's obviously how the game goes. This is how fantasy football goes. So we can get out of there. And we can just look at running backs overall. So Kyron against Green Bay. Obviously, I wouldn't be surprised if he hits a home, or home run. If he gets a touchdown, would not surprise me whatsoever in that game. Um, James Cook against Houston. He could. I'm going to bump him up to 17 a little bit. DeAndre Swift is there. Value is going to open up somewhere. Um, I like Chase Brown. I do. For value, I'm going to put him at 12. I just want to get him up there. He's involved in the passing game. He's involved in the running game. I want all of that smoke right there. So we are going to move 
to the wide receiver position and looking at the wide receiver position right here the team that gives up the most amount to the wide receivers is Detroit but they are not playing this week the commanders are second the commanders rank 31st out of 32 they give up an average of 47.8 fantasy points so this is where I'm talking about if you are stacking Deshaun Watson with some of his receivers might be the breakout game that we've been looking for for him. Amari Cooper. I absolutely love Amari Cooper here. Um, I'm looking at what he's bringing. I'm putting him up at 14. I think him and Deshaun is a great stack if you want to go one or two. I like him. Jerry Judy. So if you look at um, Cleveland's wide receivers last week. So Cooper is actually averaging less. 7.5 did not have as good a game there against Vegas. Had a great game against the Giants. And then Judy, we look at Judy, had decent, hasn't had a huge game yet, but he's had decent numbers there. 72 yards, um, 5,200. Elijah Moore, <laughs> wouldn't use him. So basically, I'm going to give a bump up to Jerry Judy to 11, just to bump that up as well. I don't mind a Deshaun Watson sack. If he does not do anything against this Washington secondary that's absolute trash, he'll never do anything. He, he should. They they gave him so much money not to do anything, which is wild. Uh, moving to the next one, can't play the Vikings. Eagles are off. Jacksonville's next. That brings us to Joe Flacco and whichever targets he decides he's going to want to throw to here. So we look at this. We look at Indy. So Jacksonville gives up an average of 44.6 fantasy points per game on DraftKings. So Pittman, 6,000, but he's averaging less. It just hasn't been him. 20.3 last week with Flacco, 113 yards. Finally had a breakout game. You got Josh Downs for 900 less. Really good game with Flacco, 82 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Pierce, cheaper option at 4,900. Has Did stuff the first two weeks, has not done the last two. So any of that can uh, happen. But I'm going to give a bump up. I'm going to put Pittman at 17. I'm going to put Josh Downs at 15. I want to boost to those two. I don't really trust the other ones, Gould, Doolin, uh, Mitchell. I don't trust them. But I do like J uh, Joe Flacco as a st uh, stack. I want to stack him with at least Josh Downs. Maybe if you want to get crazy, you want to do a QB plus two and you want to put Pittman in there as well since both had a good game last week with him. I'm completely okay with that one as well. Um, the Colts are the next game. So the Colts and the Jags defense are basically the same um, when it comes to how bad they are So against the opposing team. So Jacksonville. You obviously have Brian Thomas Jr., 5,900. Christian Kirk, 5,700. Um, they are there. Um, I don't know why Kirk is up there more. I want to take Brian Thomas at 14. I want to take Kirk at 13. Um, I don't really trust Gabe Davis much, and the rest of them really haven't done anything. Again, anything can happen, but just going off what we've seen, and it's going to rain in this game or possibility of rain, that's kind of where I'm at there. Uh, Patriots give up 38.5 fantasy points per game. So that is Miami. The problem is it's the the QB. What I already uh, we talked about is Tariq has not scored a touchdown when Tua has been out. So he's never scored a touchdown in the seven games, or it was whatever the number was, when Tua was not his quarterback. That's a problem. So if we look at that, that's a problem for me. Um, Odell is back as well. So if we look at Odell. He's 4,300. Could be a cheap option. Really hasn't done anything the past couple of seasons, though. That's the problem. Hill, I I think that I want to let Saversim do its thing. I don't trust it. So then if we look at uh, bouncing up here, Wandell with uh, Malik Neighbors being out, I want to put him at 15. I want to get him up in there. McLaren scares me a little bit, especially against Cleveland. It'll depend on which side of the ball he's on and which side of the field and who is covering him with the, the DBs and the uh, safeties. That'll be the big key here. I do want to give a boost to T. Higgins. Um, Jamar Chase has been, if you look at, uh, if you look at wide receivers here for Cincy, Jamar Chase last couple of weeks with Higgins back, six targets and seven targets. I did have obviously two touchdowns against Washington, but then T. Higgins, 
10 targets in the last game, 60 yards, 12 fantasy points. Didn't do a ton with it, but he's taking targets away from Jamar. Um, so I, I still think Chase goes up, um, and I, I do like him. So I'm going to put him at 16.15, and we'll let it do its thing. Then we get to tight ends. Tight ends, is, it's really been a show of blah with tight ends. Chiefs give up the most, but that's Monday night. Baltimore gives up the second most, which would bring us um, to Cincy. But when we've seen, Gesicki has not done much. Eric Hall Jr., um, when we get to that, that's kind of where we're at. So you say, I mean, they're very cheap. You you will save some money there. Um with Eric Hall Jr. Uh, targets have been there. He's four for four. Every time he's had a target, he's caught it. Very cheap option at 2,700. Um, Colts are next, which brings us to uh, Jacksonville, which Ingram is questionable, but he should play. No, not expected play. So then that would bump up uh, Strange, Brenton Strange at 3,200. I'd rather take the value with Eric Hall Jr. at 2,700. Save 500 there. So you definitely can save the money there um tight end i just kind of want to let the saber sim do its thing with the tight ends in this game in this uh main slate so that's what we're gonna do so we've bumped up who we like colby parkinson actually i'm gonna put him he might be one of my favorite uh plays at 3700 i'm gonna bump him up a little bit dalton kincaid as well i'm gonna put him at 12 so settings wise uh lineup rules what I want to do, I'm going to change the rules. I'm going to add a new rule. I'm going to stack at least two players, or we could do three. Let's do at least three with the quarterback. Save the rule. Build settings you can look through. Let's do 5,000 lineups for fun because it, it'll show you what we're talking about. Um, 20 max is what we're looking at. If we look at this one, we have 118,000. So we're going to bump that up to 50, over 50,000, which the diversity goes up to eight. And then contest sim, which is what I love. It kind of gets a different feel for it. We look at this. Now that is the $25,000 quarter. So we are looking at, uh, come down here, 25. There we go. So save those settings, build the lineup. So I'm going to, I'm going to pause this video until the lineups are all done and then i'll be right back all right so what it's done is it's gone through it's created the lineups it's also contest simulated all of them and you can see it's loving joe flacco with Pittman and downs you've got a broncos defense with vegas without uh Devontae. uh jaden reed number one wide receiver in that uh, matchup, which I love. you got Jordan Mason, which I absolutely love against Arizona. It's got Colby Parkinson and Kyron Williams in it, which I love as well. So we look at this, and what I love is you can see simulated return on investment 120%, risk-adjusted return on investment 254.3. It loves this one here. It's a secondary, a QB plus two, a secondary stack of two. So QB plus these two, secondary stack of the Rams. It's got two Broncos technically if you count the defense and then it's got Jaden Reed which I absolutely love as well this is a fantastic lineup this is a fantastic lineup it is the number one rated lineup so this is what I'm talking about use our information go in update some of the projections see what you can get out of there okay number two it's got Joe Flacco here it's got Joe Flacco again which is loving so obviously it made 5,000 lineups so it used 20 different quarterbacks, 26 running backs, 52 wide receivers, 21 tight ends, 70 flex, 20 defense, you know, whatever. Um, but for instance, Brock Purdy, let's see what kind of Brock Purdy lineup it shows, okay? It did not stack Purdy with anybody, which I'm not 100% with. So again, you got to change it up a little bit. It didn't stack anyone there, but it did in this one. It stacked with Mason and Debo. It's got Madison and Tucker against Denver. It's got Jaden Reed, and then it's got the Rams there, which you can build this, obviously change up a little bit with the Rams defense if you don't trust them enough. Then you got Purdy with Mason again, Christian Kirk. You got the Giants defense, which I don't love either. So you got to make a little bit of adjustments, but they are there. You can go through. You can change them. So let's say we look at a a – Josh Allen stack. I want to see what it's like in for Josh Allen. Josh Allen by himself here in the first one. 
still by himself? Is it not Josh Allen stacked with anyone? So this, oh, there you go. You got Josh Allen, James Cook, Keon Coleman. You still got Josh Downs, uh, Bo Melton, which you're going to find some value. I did forget to mention that. Sorry about that. I forgot to mention that. So with the injuries in Green Bay, with the uh, suspension of Dobbs, you've got Jaden Reed, who's number one. He's going to see most targets. Wicks, who everyone's going to be on. He had a huge game last week for 78 yards, two touchdowns. They were kind of fluky touchdowns if you want to get serious, and he does have a problem dropping balls, and I think everyone's going to be on him. Do not be surprised if Melton comes in. Got Bo Melton coming in, had three targets week four, caught one of them, but, you know, still had three targets. Um, Watson being doubtful could open up some value here. You got Malik Heath. Uh, two targets, two for two with 12 yards last week. Cheap option at 3,000. To be honest with you, I really like a Green Bay stack. I think we can change it up a little bit. I think we can take a stack. We can do the normal uh, love with Reed and Wicks, and then we change it up and go love with Reed and Melton, maybe love with Reed and Heath. Get a little bit crazy with this. Don't forget, Josh Jacobs has a great matchup for running back as well. So there are definitely different ways to go about it. Just different stacks that we can build. The ones we like, um, if we were to look at quarterbacks that we don't like or you know, places we don't want to go, I got Watson. He's very cheap. I will look at him a little bit. I don't really like Andy Dalton this week. Um, I love Joe Flacco. Stafford's got to stay in this game. I think that's a great matchup for him. Trevor Lawrence scares me a little bit, but we're here. Caleb Williams, I don't mind. Hopefully he starts to show us some stuff as well. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I think pretty much any of the quarterbacks. I don't know about Keegan uh, or Kyler Murray, though. Uh, we look at Kyler Murray. We know what he brings to the table. And we see that Marvin Harrison, they've only used him as a deep threat. They've never just... Like, let give him the ball and let him do stuff. It's always been a deep threat, which is, you know, something there. I don't know if I love Kyler Murray enough this week. We look at him. He only had 142 yards last week against a very beatable Washington defense, and then they were so far behind it didn't even matter. Um, 207 here. 260. He hasn't had a 300-yard game yet. A very good game against the Rams. Like, in week one, he started off very hot, very hot early, and then did nothing. So right here, the 266 were basically two passes. Uh, the majority was made up by Marvin Harrison. Um, I don't know if I love him enough in this matchup here. San Francisco's defense is, is legit. So definitely they scare me a little bit. And that's really it. Um, would love to know if you guys are still watching. Leave a comment. Who do you think is going to – the quarterback that's going to score the most fantasy points this week? I would love to hear it. Hopefully this was a good breakdown for you. You can use everything we just talked about here on DraftKings, and you can do it over on FanDuel as well. The pricing is obviously different. The scoring is a little bit different as well, but you can check out the scoring on the website and make some changes as needed there. So that's what I've got in this breakdown for the main slate. Make sure you check out all the other information we've got. We've got stacks video, which I'm going to put here. We've got a baseball video uh, for the two gamer for today. We're also going to break down the Sunday night football showdown and the Monday Night Football Showdown. Those videos will go out on YouTube as well. So make sure you check those out. That's what I've got in this video. Good luck today. And as always, let's bring home some bacon. Peace.